The MG5 is the fifth best-selling EV in the UK and the second best-selling estate, and that is despite the fact that it went off sale in April this year. Well, now it's back with the new design inside and out. But have the upgrades been enough to maintain its popularity? Before we fill you in with all the details though, please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you're familiar with the original MG5, you'll notice that the front has been completely redesigned. It has a new LED headlight design with daylight running. The charging port and MG logo have also been redesigned. The rear bumper has been redesigned as well. There's also a new LED tail light. There are also some new wheel designs, including these 17 inch ones, which are available with the top trim. The top trim now also offers privacy glass as well. MG has also adjusted the trim levels available. The Excite becomes the SE and the Exclusive becomes the Trophy. Both trim levels have extra features over their predecessors, but they also cost a bit more money. Overall though, the design of this car is very similar to the original version, but also the drivetrain is exactly the same as the previous long range version. The design is more of an evolution than a revolution, but it's definitely a step in the right direction and modernizes the look considerably. There are six color choices, some of which are new and most of which are sober. This one is called Hampstead Grey, which is, uh, replaces the original Camden Grey. So obviously gone a bit up in the market in terms of London boroughs. So this car does have remote locking, but there's no kind of funky sensor when you get close to it. So you have to press this button or use the key to unlock uh, and then you can get inside. Let's take a look. The interior uses similar materials to the previous version, but the infotainment has been completely redesigned. They've also cleaned up the look of a lot of the switch gear. The driver's seat has lumbar support, even from the base version, but you will need the trophy trim to get the electronic adjustment. The passenger seat is mechanically adjusted whichever trim version you go for. So it's a fairly comfortable cockpit. Headroom is okay if you're around six foot, probably if you're like six foot four, there's not so much headroom in this car, but these seats are pretty comfortable. This central console has been neatened up since the previous version. You get a couple of cup holders here. There's a little cubby back here. And this switch gear is approximately the same, but looks generally nicer. We'll talk about the functions of that in a second. This glove box maybe doesn't open far enough, but the size and capacity is reasonably decent. So underneath that central console is a space to put your phone and a couple of USB ports, plus the typical 12 volt car adapter. However, this is not a wireless phone charging pad. Rear space isn't bad, decent amount of knee room, decent amount of headroom, maybe not SUV levels, but certainly good enough for adults, not just children. This middle seat is a little bit lumpy. I probably wouldn't want to be sitting here as an adult for a long journey, but for a short journey, probably adequate, and for a kid, also probably adequate. However, if you don't have a middle seat passenger, you can pull this down, get a nice armrest with a couple of cup holders. Rear seat passengers also benefit from some functions in this central console. There's a little cubby here for them to put their packet of cigarettes. There's also a couple of USB ports, an A and a C type there, and a vent, so your, uh, your feet will be nicely ventilated, if not the rest of your body. And of course you get these pockets in the backs of the front seats for your kids to put their copies of Confucius or whatever it is kids read these days. Notice that around the car you've got this uh, blue stitching, electric blue stitching, which is a little bit reminiscent of BMW. The trim is perhaps a little bit plasticky, but not terrible. So nothing posh like a kick boot release. This is all entirely mechanical. But it's a nice size in here. You'll see I've got a nice MG bag and umbrella. Uh, this is 578 litres from floor to ceiling. And underneath here, you get a space where you can put your lovely uh, branded MG uh, charging cable bag. There's a couple of things for uh, sorting out a uh, puncture with a, an inflator and some uh, some tyre fixer there and a uh, tow bar. All very nice. You can actually drop this down um, a bit further. But one thing you'll notice is there is a lip on the boot, which some people have criticised the MG5 for. So you have this blind, uh, which you have to actually take out before you can have it slot. And then you pull these things in and you can remove it. It's not too difficult. Not super gallant, but perfectly adequate. And these seats go forward in a typical 60. 
40 arrangement. You'll notice that this boot also isn't completely flat, but it's a decent size. It's 1367 liters. So you can get quite a bit in here. So that is about 200 liters more than your average hatchback and about on par with your average mid-size, small-size estate car, but nowhere near as much as an SUV like, um, I don't know, the Skoda Enyaq IV. One last thing in the boot, you've got your granny charger and a nice little uh, container tucked here in the corner. As of the previous long range version of this car, these rails will now support 75 kilograms of cargo on the top. This car is also rated to tow 500 kilograms. So all these cars are long range cars. That means they have a 61.1 kilowatt hour battery. Now that enables a range of up to 250 miles, but if you go for the top trophy model, that drops to 235 miles. So the charging port cover has been redesigned, but it's in the same place. So you get, um, AC charging at 7 kilowatts, DC charging goes up to 87 kilowatts, which means that you can charge the car in 35 minutes from 10% to 80%, which is okay for a long journey. So charging the car from 0 to 100% will take about 9 hours on a 7 kilowatt home charger. One of the standard features with all cars, including the lower level SE trim, is that these cars support vehicle to low, which means you can actually output power from this port here with an adapter and charge external devices, maybe even charge another car. This steering wheel hasn't changed at all since the previous version. So you've got media controls on the left and you've got menu and uh, voice command controls on the right. So you get the uh, typical light stalk on the left and on the right, you've got uh, windscreen wipers. There are rain sensing wipers on this car. There is a third stalk here sitting on the left and that is for the adaptive cruise, which is a standard feature on all cars. So this is all pretty standard MG. You've got a rotary thing for selecting reverse, drive and neutral with park in the middle. Now, unlike the MG4, which went really minimal on the uh, control front, you still get these two buttons. There's one on the left here for the mode and there's one on the right here, which is still labeled Curs. But this is not a race car, but that does change the aggressiveness of the regenerative braking and down here you've got a electronic parking brake and auto hold which will bring the car to a stop automatically without you needing to uh, press the uh, brake all the time. Turning the system off and on doesn't have any keyless action you have to use this start stop button. So aside from the way this car looks the other really big upgrade is in this infotainment system which is brought bang up to date with the latest MG4. Gone are those Dowdy analog displays you get digital speed on the left and a digital power meter on the right. ADAS controls, or you can change the functionality of the central section as well. This is an entire seven inch display, whereas before it used to be a really tiny one with these analog dials either side. So these air conditioning vents in the, the HVAC system is primarily controlled via this LCD panel. You press this button on the, the left here to, to, and then you've got all the controls on here. So not quite as bad as having an L uh, entirely LCD panel based system like a Tesla. Um, you've also got controls here for front and uh, rear window demisting and you can turn it off and on here as well. So this 10.25 inch panel is the really big news with this car. You can see all the air conditioning controls, you can change, change the fan using touch screen, you can change the temperature, um, you can turn it off, you can turn it on, you can change the direction of the fans, um, turn it on eco mode, auto mode, all of that is available here. Maybe not quite as intuitive and easy to use as actual buttons, but at least you've got the basic uh, ability to uh, enable it with this button here. Um, so if you want to actually look at the other functions of the screen, hit the home button here and you can see you get all these widgets on screen um, and you can see this one is um, you can change between different things, change stations that way. Um, you've got CarPlay um, and Android Auto charging information here if you click on that you actually see the um, the charging information this display is a little bit sluggish still but it's much faster than the original one so you can see charging and discharging there you have to go back to the home screen you can you can also see it on here that's the radio navigation window quite a decent sat nav connected so another big aspect of this car is it now incorporates the full gamut of MG's iSmart connected applications. So you get much more app control over car functions. So you can enter the address, you've got favorites, you've got, um, you can go for EV chargers and parking points of interest there as well. Um, and of course, parking camera is available um, and on the uh, trophy mode, you can see it's a 360 camera. So you get a lovely top down view here on the left. The 360 view is created using cameras here, here, plus one on the other side. 
and here tucked under your badge. If you swipe along, you get further functions. You, uh, you can uh, hook up your phone. So you can see here's some assisting settings um, overall, general settings here um, of the display. You can attach user, user USB storage, uh, bind your vehicle, which is uh, nothing to do with bondage, hopefully. So the bit that hasn't really changed at all in this car is the way it drives. It still has the same 115 kilowatt, which is um, 154 horsepower electric motor. That'll take it to 60 miles per hour in about 7.3 seconds, which is pretty sprightly for a family estate car. So this car sits a little bit high, almost crossover level. And um, as you go around corners, there is a certain amount of body roll. I wouldn't therefore say it's a particularly great driver's car, not like the MG4, but you know, with that extra EV speed, it feels pretty fast. So that high stance and slightly rolly feel means that if you're driving in a high wind, which I was earlier today, it maybe doesn't feel quite as planted as some cars, but under normal conditions, it's excellent on a motorway. Steering is light, so you're gonna be, be able to navigate around a city pretty easily. There are three driving modes, Eco, Comfort and Sport. Comfort is fast enough, you might not want to drive in any other mode. Because the car's controls are incredibly conventional, it's very intuitive. If you've driven any other car, everything's in pretty much the places where you'd expect it. There's not a lot to say about this car in terms of safety features because that bit hasn't really changed very much. It still revolves around MG Pilot uh, and we'll detail uh, exactly what you get with that in the written review. Of course, one thing that is new is that parking's made easier with this 360 camera, which is only available in the trophy and there it is you see it's a little bit slow to come up but it's pretty useful now it's there nice top-down view and a fisheye view of what's behind you as we said at the beginning of this video the price has gone up a little bit over the original long-range version the entry-level SE edition is 31,000 pounds a fiver underneath that that is 1300 pounds more than the uh, entry-level version, Excite version, that it replaces. The top trophy version is £33,500, which is also a little bit more expensive than the exclusive model of the long range was before. But although those prices are more than they were before, this car still represents excellent value because you're getting a lot more equipment level. You know, the infotainment is a considerable improvement over what it was before. And this car just has a general sense of feeling a lot more modern. It's also worth saying that this car was phenomenal value when it first came out. And the only thing that stops it being an absolute value winner now is the fact that MG's brought out the MG4, which takes the value to yet another level. Of course, that value is assisted by the fact that this car has an excellent warranty of seven years or 80,000 miles. MG also claims that this car has similar residual values to other vehicles in its class, which means that the leasing prices will be pretty spot on as well. So that's the MG5. In some ways, not a huge upgrade over the original version, but in other ways, upgraded in just the places where it really needed it. This was already an incredibly practical car with decent range and a practical boot space and a decent amount of space for passengers as well. Now it's also got a much better infotainment and it looks better too. MG tells us that they've already got nearly a thousand orders for this car and nobody in the UK has even driven one yet before us. So that's pretty impressive. It's not a hugely exciting vehicle. It's a family estate, but we think it's going to sell like hotcakes. Thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to our YouTube channel.